Welcome to our review of the latest radio listening data for the period July to September 2021. Delighted to welcome radio expert, executive and commentator Matt Deegan, who's going to share his thoughts and insights. Welcome, Matt. Hey, Ford. It's good to be here. <laughs> good to see you again. Uh, this is the first set of official radio listening results since the industry last received them, you know, as a year and a half ago. And so much has changed since then. We've also had lockdowns. We've had structural changes. We've had new stations. So, Matt, I'm really intrigued to know what's your take out from this new set of results. I think what's fascinating uh, since beginning of uh, last year is a lot of things have changed. You know, we saw direction of travel for, for radio and radio stations pre-pandemic. I think the pandemic has accelerated consumer behavioural shifts, not just in radio, in, not just in media, but in all of our everyday lives. We've yeah, yeah. now working from home more or using Amazon Prime much more because we got used to that over the, the lockdown period. Um, and it's the same for media consumption. I think the other interesting bit is uh, uh, at home listening is always strong and maybe stronger than people recognize. Normally, normally it's about half of people's listening, the rest split between cars and, and work and, and on the move. So a lot of people have a lot of home time and in home times, they have multiple devices. So they've got digital radios, they've got smart speakers, they've got listening on their computers on, on their phones. Um, also, they were probably in rooms like I am on my own. No one else is here today. So I get to choose what's on the radio. I don't have to pick the station we can all agree on in the office. Um, and so that's my consumption for a broadcast radio station or a podcast or a music stream you know i've got some more choices and because of those choices people get used to things in different ways so i think all of that um has affected the numbers i mean particularly what we're seeing uh from a, a platform perspective um is decline in analog so uh share of analog hours or analog share of total radio listening is about a third now it's 34 percent. so only okay. a third of uk radio listening is to am and fm yeah. Um, so the majority of that's digital. That breaks down to 43% DAB, 4%, uh, 4.7% uh, DTV, and 18% on the internet. And that's seen an increase from 14%. So you've got digital listening has colonized people's ears. And you know, that's not going anywhere. That's jumped at a faster pace than was predicted. Um, but like two thirds, a third, you know, that's, that's a real shift. And even on reach. So if you think about um, your volume of listening is one thing, when we look at reach figures, all, all reaches is that you've listened to a platform or a station for five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's it, five minutes. Um, and for AMFM, that's down to 57% of the UK population listening to analog radio and 60.2% of the population listening to DAB, and obviously much more when, when listening to the combined digital platforms. So uh, with big decline in analog, um, nice growth in, in digital. And a lot of that's been driven um, by this consumer change, but also by new radio stations. You know, content is always what drives consumer behavior when people seek out um, new services. Uh, two ones that we've seen in this book, or three that we've seen in this book, um, Times Radio, uh, obviously from News Corp, big big brand. No one really knew how it did. They started about when lockdown started. Great first book, over six hundred thousand uh, weekly. Is that, reach. is that a good? Is that a good result for them, Matt? Will they be pleased at New, uh, New UK? Yeah, I think so. I think anything over half a million is impressive. I think they're okay. probably their stretch goal is a million, but you know. Um, Six four seven six two seven. I, th I think I think I think that they're out now. I mean, you might have it in front of you. Um, is is a really good first book and um, good opportunity for growth for them. But I, I think I think they'd be very happy there as well. Um, similarly, another new radio station, Boom Radio, um, independent station um, for kind of sixty pluses, um, a service which you know a demographic that's been somewhat ignored by um, the radio industry. Um, it's always done well listening older people love listening to the radio and listen for uh, large proportions of, of time so they're great for hours they went in with 233,000 reach and a stonking 1.8 million hours that's uh, average hours of 7.8 uh, per listener which is really strong i mean that's yeah, people yeah. love that service and what does that say that suggests um unmet demands for an audience who and maybe were previously listening to radio stations that don't quite scratch that itch um uh, but for an indie station to go in with you know, a couple hundred thousand reach and strong hours is is impressive and again first book for them a lot of opportunity for growth 
So, yeah, I mean, so it, it's great news for listeners. They're getting all the, all this new content. I mean, when you look at the radio industry as a total, um, I mean, obviously, it's been a year and a half about data. I mean, how will the radio industry l- look at these results? Will they will they be comforted by by the levels of listening and the, the hours and both the reach as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, total hours for UK is above a billion, um, which is which it hasn't been for the year previously. Uh, I think uh, listeners probably, f- or a certain group of listeners, definitely fell in love with radio even more over the over the lockdown period. BBC Local Radio has had a really, really good uh, set of results. Um, that was at a point where commercial radio has moved away to national brands. And a lot of people are more interested in what's happening locally, local lockdowns, issues, all those sorts of things. So BBC Local Radio kind of perfect positive storm for them uh, in numbers uh, as well. And do we learn very much from this set of results about the the real impact of the pandemic on, on listening? I mean, obviously... Um, I, I think listening in car is probably a little, little bit less than the normal. Um, so does that tell us that listening did, did shift during the, the uh, pandemic? I think it's hard to know because this is sort of a snapshot from the new normal, but also got to remember not everyone's back at work yet. Yeah. Um, population wise is not returned to its, its pre pandemic um, systems and maybe won't be. And I think maybe next quarter we'll get a, even a bit more of an idea of whether people are returning. And so, you know, maybe in car isn't going to be as strong as it's been before. Um, maybe those digital platforms, well, I think those digital platforms are here to stay, of course, but um, that larger listening is probably going to grow faster because people are in more digital environments, their home than work or the car, which has been maybe slower to convert, you know, as more cars have it, um, uh, you know, in, in car digital radio or IP connected sources and, and things like that. So because of the places people are, that's partly why the change and the consumption is accelerating. Yeah. Um, but I mean, once again, overall, it looks like in total terms, radio's in, in rude health, but you, you highlighted, you know, um, issues and perhaps concerns about younger listening. Yeah, I, mean, I think generally very good. I think the success of new station launches also means that people, particularly digital radios um, or smart speakers, are, are able to tune to new things. Um, you know, it's a device that allows you to flick around a bit more, be you asking it or, or using a dial. Um, and that's good news for new product development uh, and new stations. And there's a platform that suddenly new stations can find an audience. And that's exciting for the sector. And you don't see that in, in every international market. So international markets that have not had digital broadcasting um, have found it very difficult um, yeah, they're still seeing platform shifts, but they're away from radio because they yeah. haven't taught their listeners to listen to digital radio stations through broadcast and then for smart speakers. So just jumping to smart speakers, just jumping to internet is yeah. a much harder thing if you haven't gone through or have a large amount of, of DAB based consumption. I mean, yeah, I mean, you make a great point. I mean, if people, um, presumably broadcasters will be encouraged by their ability to launch new stations so very quickly to, to gain an audience. Although they are in many cases leveraging existing brands, whether it be like Light Times, for mm. instance, um, but Booms are totally new brands, so yeah. and, and has had a good first book. I mean, the, the modern world, whether you're launching a website or a print publication or anything, yeah, yeah. Uh, cutting through to consumers is hard um, and requires significant effort. I think what's interesting with Boom is they have put a lot of time and effort into marketing in places where their audience live um the sort of the old view that you could flick on a radio station and suddenly people would find it is is, is much difficult in the smart speaker world that's even more difficult because you haven't got a screen to look at so um you know, it's like history history had a great book um i think up uh, i think maybe nearly half a million listeners um that's a brand that's existed within kiss and obviously has existed as a, as a digital brand for a long time and it's become quite a heritage brand really in in in, in digital yeah. radio uh, and so um uh, spin-offs is, is a great shortcut um, to uh, cutting through to consumers, um, and I'm sure um, that's not that's not going to change. We've been a year and a half without data. Um, we get the next set of data what in February for for the next quarter. Mm. I, I guess at that point we can make the comparison. So what should we be looking forward to in the in the next set of radar data? Uh, I think like anything, you know. Radar each quarter is a snapshot and the trend is your friend. That's what you want to look at to make sure that, th- that these things are, are going in the right direction um, or the direction you, you think, you think yeah. they are. So one, it will give us a bit, bit of confidence about that. 
Um, I think we'll still see some consumer shifts with with people going back to work and in car and, and all of those things. Uh, and yeah, there's some a, more, a bit more time for those new stations uh, to settle in and to see whether whether there's there's that growth. I mean, I think anyone who wants to hear more from from you and indeed when when you get get through to all those detailed insights, they can, um, how, how can they hear, because I think you write a blog about the, uh, about Ray Giles. Yes, there's a weekly blog about audio and radio and streaming, and you can subscribe to that. It's free at mattdegan.com. Um, and you can also listen to the media podcast, which you can find on all of your podcast platforms of choice. Um, but, yeah, and that's so, a fortnight yeah. look at all media and the, the, the edition that's going to be out this week is a Rage R special. Brilliant. Well, we, we look forward to that, but we also look forward to hearing more from you in uh, in, in your podcast uh, when, you, when you actually get time to, to finish that off. We'll let you get on with that now, but many thanks for joining us today and uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. Thank you.